Welcome to Electra Online. The continental drift is something that really cannot be underestimated. About 200 or 250 million years ago, back in that time range, all the continents or most of the continents were assumed to be pretty well in the same location of the Earth. So you have one huge ocean on one side of the planet and then most of the continents combined on the other side of the planet. And when all those land masses were together, North America, South America, Africa, Greenland and Eurasia, all put together, that landmass was known as Pangaea, one landmass, that's what Pangaea means. And since then, over the last 200, 250 million years, and even then, that's only a small percentage of the total lifespan of the entire Earth, which is about four and a half billion years old, during that time, the continents have drifted apart at a rate of about three centimeters per year. You may say three centimeters per year, that's about one inch per year, that's almost nothing. But actually, that's a lot. And in a period of about 200 or 250 million years, those continents have drifted apart from one another so that now between them we have the Atlantic Ocean where before they're actually touching. Notice what set that concept in motion is when we look at the shape of South America and the shape of Africa, it was quite evident that there was a lot of similarity, that it was almost two pieces of the puzzle. And indeed, if we also look at the the, the uh, shores of North America and of the European continent, we can see that they kind of mesh together as well. And since then, they've been moving apart, creating a huge mountain range all the way down from the North Pole down to the South Pole along what is now known as the Atlantic Ocean. Three centimeters per year, can that account for the size of the Atlantic Ocean today? It turns out it does because three centimeters per year means 300 centimeters per century. And of course, three, 300 centimeters, that is actually three meters per century. That means over the period of a thousand years, that would be 30 meters. So if we go back a thousand years in history to today, we can say that the North American continent and European continent are now 30 meters farther apart from one another. That would be 30 meters in 1,000 years. Now. What if we go to a million years? How far would they separate from one another? Well, 30 meters times 1,000 would be 30 kilometers. So that means in a million years, we'd have a separation of 30 kilometers per 1 million years. And then if we go to 100 million years, oh, that would be years. If we now go into 100 million years, we multiply that times 100, we have 3,000 kilometers in 100 million years or 6,000 kilometers in 200 million years. And that is roughly the distance between North America and, and Europe and South America and Africa. Not quite 6,000 kilometers, but close to that. So you can see that at a rate of about one inch per year, about three centimeters per year, in the time span of 200 million years, you can create something as large as the Atlantic Ocean. And that is what happens on the Earth. So, over time, in geological time, over the thousands and millions of years, enormous changes have happened to the surface of the Earth. Of course, in today's, in a single lifespan, it's hard, and that's kind of like the blink of an eye in, in respect of to 200 million years. But nevertheless, this is quite dramatic. So planets and moons that still have a liquid interior, that still have a molten interior, can have enormous changes occur on the surface in relatively short amount of time, if you think about 200 million years as a short amount of time. But in geological time, that is fairly quick for those dramatic changes. So you can see these are still going on. Imagine what the world will look like 200 million years from now. Too bad we can't be around to see it.